The Legacy of the Twins, Eran and Enrique's Promise. We'll get you, little wolf and cherry blossom. No one will be able to defeat us. No one. We are the strongest. We have origins deeper than you understand, too, smart ones. We will win. So, we have proclaimed to make the Chosen Two's life miserable. We have thoroughly bound ourselves into our complex pot. Yet, have we wondered once in a while why we are doing this? Ten, nine, eight, seven. Bemused, Chain Iran gazed at the clock. Zero. Sakura and Shadon burst into the classroom, breathless. As usual, those two had made it to school just on time. Not that he blamed them for being almost tardy. He doubted they got much sleep last night, thanks to another one of his mischievous little plots. Yet, the corner of his eye slightly crinkled to see Sakura and Shadon fumbling to take out their homework as they muttered stuff like, Why didn't you wake me? Oh, stupid, it was your turn to make the lunches. Well, why... Did you do my math homework? Since they were staying together, it was evident that they had mixed up their homework. As usual, they were squabbling in a friendly way. For a second, Sakura caught Edon's eye. Did she catch him staring at her? Then Sakura smiled widely, her eyes sparkling like the emerald ocean. Edon ignored the fact that his heart skipped a beat and that somehow the classroom seemed warmer. He grinned back his lazy, charming smile that he was so used to pulling on that he wanted to impress people and let them fall under his spell. Yet, for some reason, he felt so phony and superficial. He watched Shadon scowl at him, then present his discontent to Sakura. In return, Sakura laughed, flicking back her braided golden brown pigtail into Shadon's face, who tugged it teasingly. The teacher cleared his throat and then asked calmly, Lee Shadon, Kinemoto Sakura, do you find each other more interesting than the lesson? Er, yes, Tirada Sensei, Sakura and Shadon both exclaimed, bolting up from their chairs. Then they realized what they had said. Everyone tittered. Secretly, Tamei was videotaping again under the desk. They hastened to say, I, I, I mean, no, Tirada Sensei. Sorry, we'll pay attention to the lesson. Erika, who was that? Edon asked, raising an eyebrow when he saw Erika waving goodbye prettily as a handsome boy she had walked down the hallway with her arm hooked into entered another classroom. Hmm, a friend. Another friend? What happened to the other guy? Oh, I don't need him anymore. I passed the history test thanks to his notes. Erika replied carelessly shrugging. She swept her thick, shoulder-length violet hair over her shoulder. <sighs> Sign, Eron fingered his long ponytail. Is it always a good idea to use everyone like that, switching from person to person? I mean, why don't you just try making them friends instead of discarding them? <laughs> what are you talking about? Erika asked, raising an elegant eyebrow. Oh, I don't know. Eron gazed out the school window. Outside, Sakura, Shauron, and all their friends, Tameo, Chiharu, Rika, Nako, Takashi, Aki, Everyone had gathered in a circle, eating lunch. They all laughed, gossiped, and generally had a good time with each other, trading parts of their meals and sharing desserts. Smiling tightly, Erika said, I don't need any friends. I have you, Oni-chan. You're the only one I trust and rely on. I don't need anyone else. Just my dear, dear twin brother, Chain Eran. It's always been this way, me and her the two of us versus the whole world. We had no one else but each other. Patting his younger twin's shoulder, Adon replied, <laughs> You're right, Erika. We can always count on each other. They gazed straight into each other's identical hazel golden eyes. Around each of their necks hung a strange black gem-like rock, which constantly shifted underneath the outer crystal layer if one looked closely enough and in each of their ears was one pigeon blood ruby earring, stud earring. Edon's was pierced in his left ear. Erika had hers in a second hole in her right ear, above her usual set of earrings. How did he and his twin sister grow so cold and distrusting, distant from the rest of the world? Edon closed his eyes, 
reflecting back on his childhood. Add-ons flashback. Ever since we were born, it has been the two of us, Eron and Arika, Arika and Eron. Our mother passed away when we were born, or <laughs> so we were told. We were abandoned orphans, yet we had each other, and that was all that mattered. As children, we were practically identical from our dark, glossy violet hair and our golden eyes. After all, I did look very much like a pretty girl. Some people say I still do. Ah, I know I'm good looking. <laughs> Never mind that. Since an early age, I grew accustomed to looking after Erika. Although she was my twin and only a few minutes younger than me, she was still like my younger sister. She had a weak heart, therefore was more frail and weak than other children. This kept her from being active and making other friends. She was sort of an outcast from society and prone to teasing and being left out from all the games and fun. And this made me always keep an eye out for her. We were still happy, however. Yet, it wasn't long before Arika's weak heart caught, prevented her from carrying on the life of any other little girl. By the time we were five, Arika had to make frequent visits to the hospital. By the time we were seven, she had to stay in the hospital for good. One day, one of the nurses said, Aaron, I know you're really too young to tell you this, but we understand that you and your twin sister are inseparable. Now listen to me carefully. Eron, at the age of seven, looked up with grave, hazel eyes. The nurse continued, Erica is very sick. We have to prepare her for an operation, but in her current condition, she is too weak. Therefore, we have to build up her strength. We're trying our best, but the chances are very risky. So, Aaron, I want you to be a brave little boy and have faith and courage. He nodded, gripping his fist tightly. Then cautiously, he entered the small hospital room. Eagerly, little Erika was waiting for him in the bed. She looked like a child angel in her white nightgown and her dark curls framing her face. Her golden hazel eyes were cloudless and clear. As Eron entered the room, her whole features brightened up like sunshine radiating in the dark room. Oni-chan, you came! I was waiting for you the whole day. What did the doctor say? Can I go back home? Home was the overcrowded, scanty orphanage. Putting on a bright smile, Eron stated, <laughs> Of course I came, Erika. I try to come as fast as I can. See, Oni-chan brought you a doll. You always wanted a doll to play with, right? Walking over to the bedside, Eron kneeled in front of it and handed Erika a pretty golden-haired doll. Excited, Erika held it up and squealed excitedly, grasping it in a tight hug. Ooh, thank you, Oni-chan! She must have caught the sad glimmer in her twin's eyes, however. Setting the doll down on the bed, she said, But... I'd rather have Oni-chan than a doll. I love my Oni-chan the best. <laughs> of course, Erika. I love you best, too. Edon replied, trying to smile again at his identical twin. Still, being a seven-year-old made it rather difficult to hide emotions. In a timid, almost hesitant voice, Erika said, Me and Edon will always be together, Right? She grasped her twin's hand with her icy cold ones. Eron's eyes turned round as he gazed at her hands. They looked so small and weak, and they were so cold, so cold like the icy morning kissing the brows of one who departed in the long night. And squeezing his twin sister into a tight hug, Eron murmured, <laughs> Silly, of course we'll always be together. We'll always be by each other's side. Promise? Erika asked in a sadly hopeful voice. <laughs> Silly, of course I promise. He didn't show her the silent tears which fell into her glossy dark hair. Instead, he whispered in a strained yet calm voice. I, Eron, solemnly promise my twin Erika that we'll always be together through whatever hardships we go through, through the good times and the bad times. And I meant to keep my words. 
It happened the very next day. Erika fell into a coma. The doctors and nurses panicked and were helpless to do anything. Here, look at patient number 153's chart. We can't have an operation under her condition, one doctor stated. Yet, if we just leave her, that might even be more costly, another doctor replied. Yet, she's only seven years old, and she's had a weak heart for most of her life. What can we do? This is a pretty hopeless situation anyway. Meanwhile, I was watching from my position kneeling by my twin sister's bedside. I stared at her deathly pale face, her quickened breathing which came out and gasped, and her limp, fragile body. She was smiling at me only a few hours ago. The doctors hustled here and there, ignoring me. Little did they know how much I could understand for a seven-year-old. The doctor continued, plus, if we have an operation, we'll need blood. This little girl's blood type is very rare type, and I don't see how we can replace it since we don't have that type in the hospital. Standing up, Adon exclaimed, She can take mine. You can use mine. Oh, don't be silly, the doctor shushed. Donors have to be a legal age of 16 or older. You're just a little boy. But she's my sister. She's my twin sister. We have the same blood type. I want to save her. I promised I'll always be by her side. Oh, little boy, I don't think you understand. Her situation is really grave. There's not much that can be done, and giving your blood isn't going to help. And we can't endanger you as well, so be a good boy and wait outside. One of the nurses took a hold of his arm. No! Let me go! Tell me what's going to happen to Erika! Tell me! The doctors just looked at the boy, sadly. Then they ran over to the pulse reader. The nurse said, Doctor, her heartbeat's becoming more faint. At this rate, look, we're trying our best. Best, Bring me the operation equipment. Even in her unconscious state, Erika was dimly aware of what was going on around her. Her chest felt like it was being torn apart. Her body felt so numb and helpless. So helpless. Tears gathered at the brim of her eyes. She heard Eron shouting. Oh, she hated herself. Why am I so weak and pathetic? I'm always making my twin brother worry. Why couldn't I have been normal and be strong and healthy? I hate myself. What's the point of living if I'm only causing pain to Edda? Her heartbeat's slowing down. The operation is unsuccessful, the doctor stated in distress as he sat down the equipment. You liars! You said you were going to try your best! Edon shouted in rage. You're just giving up? Boy, there's nothing more we can do. All we can do is just leave things to fate and God, the doctor replied, slowly filing out of the room with the nurses. No! Arika! Arika can't die! Edon yelled through tears, pounding on the doctor's leg. Gently, the doctor pushed him aside. Edon collapsed onto the floor. Tears poured out of Erika's shut eyes. Her breath came in short, gasped, and already her head began to feel fuzzy. No, she can't give in. She had promised Eron that they would always be together. Eron was crying. He never cried in front of her before. To her, he always showed a bright, smiling face. She couldn't disappoint him. I wish I was strong so that I don't have to cause Eron any worry. I wish I was healthy, so I don't have to be trapped in the hospital. Why do I have to be so weak? Why is life so unfair? I don't want to die so soon, yet my body doesn't follow my orders. I want to live. I want to live on and stay by Eron's side and cause him no more problems. I'm so scared, so scared of dying and being parted from. Adam. Then came a mysterious, deep woman's voice. Do you want to live, my little one? Do you want to become strong and powerful? The voice was so powerful as it rang in her head. Yes, I want to be strong and live on. I want to protect my brother from now on. I can give you the power to do so, little Orika. Who are you? How do you know my name? I've always watched over you and your twin. I've been waiting a long time for you now. 
I am your far-off ancestor, dating from the time of the Five Force Magician. Years ago, my brother and I were betrayed by the people we called friends, people we trusted and thought we could count on, yet they all turned their backs on us. You must understand what it feels like to have the whole world turn a cold back on you, young as you are. You were abandoned as a baby. You lived in a poor, meager orphanage which abused you. All the other children made you an outcast because you were different. The hospital didn't care more or less whether you die or not. The only person who you care for is your twin brother. But you've only caused him worry and pain so far. Well, I am very powerful, but I need a mortal person of my heritage to follow my will to finally pay back what I was waiting for to avenge for generations. I can make you powerful, Arika, if you're willing to accept it. Please, I'll do anything to become strong. I don't want to be weak anymore. I don't want for Oni-chan to have to worry and look after me. Then, are you willing to accept my soul into your body? Yes! I want to live and never be parted from my twin. <laughs> You're a brave little girl, my young ancestor. Just the one I was waiting for in a generation. From now on, you are the chosen dark one of the chain. Accept your new powers and ordain our wishes, and you won't live to regret it. There was a flash of blinding white light surrounding Erika's limp body. For a moment, she levitated in the air, then a piercing feeling rippled through her bo whole body, and she felt as if she was being torn to pieces. She let out a scream, coming from the inner torture as a substance filled her blood, mixing in with the stream of her body. A penetrating pop came from her right ear. Finally, she lay back on her hospital bed. Her whole body felt vigorous and strong as she never felt before. She fingered her right ear lobe, which throbbed. In it was inserted a single circular pigeon's blood red ruby stud earring, one of the five force treasures. Suddenly, she realized that she seemed to have so much more knowledge and awareness before. Slowly, she sat up, tearing away the tubes which were attached to her arm. She gazed at a strange stone which was shaped like an eye that hung around her neck. When she gazed into it, the strangely shifting black stone, she almost felt hypnotized by it. She knew that the mysterious woman's soul was sealed into this stone that hung from the choker around her neck. At an early stage, she learned that it was impossible to take off the necklace, yet that didn't matter. Erika's eyes glistened. Eron, I'm no longer weak. From now on, I'm going to become strong and you'll never have to worry about me again. In the meantime, outside the hospital room, a deep man's voice echoed through Adon's head. Do you feel so hopeless and powerless to do anything? Don't you wish you were more powerful so that you can help your little sister? Lifting his head, which had been buried in his arms, he stared around him to find out where the voice came from. Yes, but who are you? I am your far-off ancestor, the Chain family. I have come to make you powerful. Will you accept my offer? Anything to save Arika and keep my promise to her. I promised her we'll always be together. I don't want to break my word. You have power inside you. However, it is weak, so weak, and it hasn't awakened yet. All you have to do is accept my soul into your body. It won't make a difference to you. Just the power inside you will awaken, and you will gain my knowledge. You will always keep your word and look after your twin. Do you accept my offer? Most certainly. Edron looked straight ahead with burning golden eyes, which still flowed with tears. I want to save Arika. I want to keep my promise to her. Seconds later, he fingered a ruby earring in his left ear. He hadn't changed yet. He had. 
The soul of the mysterious man hung from the black cord around his neck, sealed inside a strange black stone. It felt heavy around his neck, and his body felt a strange sort of fire running through his veins, yet now he was no longer afraid of anything. He was powerful. Soon after the twins gained their special powers, they came to an understanding that they would have to fight against Lee Shaodan and Kinomoto Sakura, also with the five force magician ancestors. For the next years, Edon and Rika traveled from place to place, learning new things about their powers, not to mention strengthening it. Their ancestors told them that they were yet far from reaching their full capacity. By then, they realized that they were no longer normal children. Though they still attended school every so often, they realized that they were different from others. They chose to stick together and distrust anyone else. Six years later, they returned to Tomeda as the legendary Dark Ones and became the source behind all of Sakura's problems. End of flashback. <sighs> Sighing, Erika leaned against the wall. Most of the time, she tried not to think about her childhood and how she came to be who she was now. Well, it was hard to imagine someone so self-confident and surely as she had suffered from illness and spent most of her time in a hospital as a child. <laughs> it didn't matter anymore. She was only 15. She still had plenty of time to make up what she had lost during childhood. Even as Adon questioned her about her tendency to jump from one guy to another, <laughs> she brushed it off lightly. She realized earlier that she could no longer express her feelings with her innocent childhood frankness and earnestness to Aaron. Deep in her heart, her twin brother meant the world to her, and he was the reason for her existence. Aaron was the only person in the whole world she actually trusted and believed in. Sad to say, but he was her only friend. Yet now, even though her heart felt strong, and even though her heart felt one thing, her words and actions all came out wrong. She and Aaron were now prone to criticizing and teasing each other. Erika tried to act laid back and uncaring. Aaron tried to act even more laid back and uncaring. Somehow she felt that they weren't being completely honest with each other anymore because they took each other for granted. Still, she saw the slight pain in Aaron's gold eyes as he watched Sakura. It wasn't often yet Erika glimpsed what she thought was slight, wistful, maybe even a sad feeling in her twin. Hmm. She wondered why. Sometimes she did understand, though. Erika, are you coming to P.E.? Sakura called, running down the hall. Turning her nose in the air, Erika replied, What do you think I'm doing now? I'm walking to class. Okay, Sakura exclaimed, running after Tameo. Tameo-chan, wait up! <laughs> Today I'm going to videotape Sakura, showing her wonderful athletic skills, Tameo stated. <laughs> Those two were the best of friends. For the tenth time, Erika thought that P.E. was a waste of time. She stood around while her team members ran around playing basketball. Hmm, maybe it was because she had absolutely no team cooperation and no idea why anyone should run around and pass a ball to each other, getting all sweaty. She couldn't understand why they called it fun. Maybe it was because when she was little, she couldn't run around because she wasn't supposed to overuse her heart. All the same, she stared discontentedly as Sakura shot an excellent basket from the air and all the students cheered. Erika stared at Sakura's smiling face as she wiped the sweat from her brows. Now, the ball was in play again. Eron had the ball. Then out of nowhere, swept out Shaodan, who neatly stole away the ball and dribbled it to the other side. Quickly, the other team members marked him as he came closer to the basket. When Shaodan realized that there was no one to pass to, he stepped back. Then, with perfect form, he jumped up and shot a three-pointer. The ball cleanly swept into the basket with a swish. <laughs> Go, Shaodan! Erika squealed. When Eron shot her a nasty look, she stuck out her tongue at him. Well, Shadon was cute, enemy or not. When Sakura got her hands on the ball again, she came dribbling up to the basket near where Erika was standing. Someone from her team shouted, Erika, do something! Instantaneously, Erika tried to block Sakura. The first thing she'd done 
all throughout the game. At that moment, Sakura tried to dodge and end result sprain her right ankle. She collapsed onto the floor and everyone crowded around her at once. Surprised, Erika bent down and said, uh, I'm, I'm sorry. She expected Sakura to accuse her of deliberately tripping her, which Erika had thought about before, but this time she truly didn't do anything. Smiling up at her, Sakura replied, why are you sorry? It's all my fault I fell. <laughs> Clumsy me. <laughs> Oh, no wonder my brother calls me a clumsy monster. How <laughs> so stupid of me. Oh, she gritted her teeth as her ankle began to swell, yet that smile didn't falter. With rounded, golden-flecked hazel eyes, Erika tilted her head and gazed at Sakura suspiciously. <laughs> what was wrong with this girl? How can she smile when she's in pain? Excuse me, excuse me, Sean said as he pushed his way through the crowd of students on the court. Then quickly kneeling on the gym floor and examining her foot, Shadon scolded. Oh, you should have been more careful. You sprained your ankle on that same spot that you fell down the stairs last spring. I told you to be careful on that leg. Here, I'll carry you to the infirmary. <laughs> it's okay, Sakura stammered. I can walk. Oh, shut up. Listen to me before it gets worse. I have no intention of carrying you all the way home, so. On they squabbled all the way to the infirmary with Sakura hopping on one leg and Shadon trying to support her. Halfway through, he grew impatient and completely swept her off her feet and carried her away. We shout on the go, it's embarrassing. Sakura protested as Shadon carried her with ease. Oh shush, you can't walk. You should be thankful I'm carrying you. Shadon retorted, yet still held her gently. When Eron raised an eyebrow at Arika, she replied, no, I didn't make her fall on purpose. Okay, I admit I did it last time to sabotage her for the audition of Starcross, but this time it was purely an accident. Yeah, yeah, muttered Eron, grinning mischievously, gazing at Sharon carrying Sakura, followed by a group of friends, made Erika sigh, though. She gazed at Sharon scolding Sakura, while at the same time carrying her in arms in his arms like a doll. Ugh, how annoying they all were. Yet, she was slightly envious. Later that evening, Erika asked Eron, Do you like Sakura? I mean, really like her? <laughs> what kind of question is that? Stammered Eron. You can be truthful with me. I'm your twin sister. I know everything about you. <laughs> Why do you want to know something like that all of a sudden? It's not like you. Hmm, I wonder... If you didn't have special powers, and if you weren't the chosen dark one, would you be leading a normal life now with friends, a girlfriend, and just regular teenage stuff? And would you ha have enjoyed that better? Erika gazed up earnestly. Well, I've led a different life from others, yet I don't mind, because I have... Having you by my side is the most important thing. If we didn't take the road of having special powers, you wouldn't be here with me today to endure through life together. And no matter what, I would be unhappy then. Aaron looked up and smiled sincerely. I'm never going to break my promise to you, Erika. I swore back when the doctors and nurses had given up. I swore I would do anything to let you live. And I was going to stay by your side from now on. For a second, Erika's eyes turned misty. <sighs> you remembered our promise. Of course, Erika. Why do you think I've lasted this long and struggled this hard and turned so crooked? Wistfully, Adon grasped the black stone around his neck as if it were choking him. It's so that I can be with you and watch over my little sister. For the first time in ages, Erika found that she had tears in her eyes. Quickly, she turned her face away from her twin and wiped her face with her sleeve. <laughs> What's wrong with me? I swore I would never show a weak face to Adon again. Then she spun around smiling. <laughs> Eron, let's win this fight together. Let's win and avenge the cause of our ancestors' misery. Then everything will be all right. Then we can be like normal twins. Plucking a blood-red rose from the vase, Eron held it to his nose. <laughs> I don't know if we'll ever be what people call normal, but we will win, Erika. Nothing will prevent us from winning. Nothing. Erika listened to his smooth, confident words as Adon gripped the rose tightly in his fist, yet his hands were trembling and his veins were covering his eyes as his head was bent down. 
She could have sworn she saw a single drop of water drop onto the crimson rose petal. Without much thought, Edon flung the limp flower into the onto the floor and tread on it. Staring, Erika bent down as she murmured softly, Yet, sometimes, I think we've been wrapped up in being evil and causing misery for each other for so long. Gently, she picked up the crushed rose and held it to her chest. I think we've forgotten the reason for living. Standing up again, she looked at Eron, questioningly, heaving a long sigh. <sighs> Edon took the rose and set it back in the vase filled with water. <laughs> Even if I put this crushed rose back in the vase full of water with the other fresh ones, it is already damaged beyond repair. Why this rose out of all the other roses? Yet, somehow, it turned out to be this rose to be singled out and crushed. It's distinct from the other beautiful roses. Unless there is a miracle, this rose will fade away and die. Slowly, Edon let a single strand of power flow from the tip of his fingers to the stem of the limp rose. Immediately, the rose sparked up, spreading its ruby-red petals in full bloom, larger and more radiant than the others. It spread out new green leaves from its stem and stood out from the other red roses. <laughs> well, I took the choice of the miracle, yet accepting a miracle means that I choose a different path from the others, so definitely... I have to make sacrifices also. In a few minutes, the other roses in the vase cringed and turned away from the single vivid crimson rose. In a matter of a few more minutes, only that rose remained in bloom. The others wilted and hung limply around the vase. The scarlet rose was beautiful to withhold, yet somehow it looked so lonely in the midst of a vase full of brown, withered flowers. Turning to Arike, Aaron continued, Yet, even though I took a path different from others, I have no regrets. If I was asked to make the same choice all over again, this is still the life I would pick, Arike. Eventually, we shall win. We have to win this fight before we are completely lost in darkness. Hundreds of times, we have asked ourselves, Why are we doing this? Why are we living like this? Well, it is for our ancestors who were betrayed by the unfriendly world. It is also for the little siblings of gone by days who had been abandoned by everyone and left to die. It is for us, the legendary chosen twins, who chose to have power, the power to enable us to live on, and the power to avenge those who have made our lives miserable. But most of all, it is because we made a promise so long ago that we will always be by each other's side to endeavor through good times and hard times and to survive together. And we live to keep that promise. <laughs>